Hey, hey, D. I'm Jimmy Butler. Welcome to California, better yet. Welcome to my house. I think fancy people call this a foyer. I don't call it that. I call it the beginning of a house, like the, I don't know, but it's not a foyer. You got art, it is a ton of space to do absolutely nothing. This is actually probably the most pointless area in the house, but I guess you just walk to the front door and then you're here. Oh, and there's a, there are roses. The designer I've worked with, Tiffany. Tiffany Brooks Interior. I was just telling her, yo, get freaky with it. And she came in here and really fucked some shit up. I'm very impressed. I think I said I just want like it to be really, really, really light. Like, I want all this natural light. I want white walls, light floors, pretty couches and stuff. I didn't ask for this table though, she put that there. I probably take a lot of credit for it now that I think about it. Like when people ask, oh, what'd you do to the house? I was like, I put a table in this room, a piano over here. It was Tiffany that did it. This is like my live music room. When I say live music room, I mean, if any of my musical friends are coming over, this is where we set them up. If and when we have karaoke, AD, everybody's invited. I will outperform anybody. I may not sound the best, but I guarantee I'll put on a great show. Ooh, go to karaoke song. Right now, this second, uh, a bar song. Everybody, yeah, that one. And if we like all time, it's uh, Mario, Mario, however you want to say it, let me love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the kitchen. That's my baby's chair right there. My daughter's seat, my significant other seat. That's a lie. I'm single, ladies. Holla at me. Y'all see my house. So a normal morning, afternoon, indoor dinner, we don't really sit down. Well, the kids do. We all stand up and eat like black people do. It's like we have chairs, we just don't use them. And we just make a complete utter master's food all on the floor from the kids. At one point in time, we all have to understand that we are our kids bitches if you're a parent. Whatever the kids say, you just have to do. So we could have full blown steak, and potatoes, and then Riley's like, I want spaghetti. And then fucking Riley gets spaghetti because I'm a little bitch. This place is called the conservatory. The reason that I like this space is because like with the floors, I feel like I'm in Italy, but I'm in California. I'm at home. Hot. It is hot in this room. Between this hot ass window and these windows, it is hot in here. The chandelier that's up here, it's custom made for me. It's beautiful, it looks cool in this hot ass room. Tiffany did design it. She picked a, uh, just, there's too many shape light bulbs up there. And I just think it's Tiffany being Tiffany, just hella extra for no reason. But it's, good job Tiff, did great. Now we are in the wine cellar, which is my new favorite area of the house. It's the vibe that I was going for, like darker, drink your wine, spill it on the floor. You can't really tell because I got all of this dark brick. Chris Howell is the master sommelier. Is that how you say it? Sommelier, sumo wrestler. He's the one that drinks um, all the wine and he's the one that helps me to collect all of this expensive grape juice. This is my favorite wine. It is the absolute greatest. Sesakaya, shouts to y'all. In 2013, Mark Wahlberg was in town filming Transformers. And when we get to his trailer, he's like, hey, do you drink wine? And I was like, no. And then the dude next to me was like, yes, you do. You don't tell Mark Wahlberg that you don't drink wine. And he popped a bottle of 2010 Sesakaya. And that's probably the most collected wine that I have. This is the hallway. I call this the big boy hallway because obviously all the big bottles. That leads to the main part of this wine cellar. I swear, if I hit one of these steps behind me, uh, where all the normal size bottles are, which is behind me. Yeah, see that? I've been here a ton of times that I know where each and every, I definitely didn't know that that last one was a step. 
Now we are here. We have made it to the rotunda. Look at this chandelier. Tifton did it again. And those are moon rocks on the top of the chandelier up there, straight from Mars. The total seller holds about 20,000, and I think I got like 6,100 bottles in here as we speak. This behind everybody right here, um, you know what? This is my California section. You got the Screaming Eagle over here. And then we're going into Italy. This area is the Bordeaux. Bordeaux is here. This is probably my favorite bottle in here. A 1973 Mouton Rothschild. I know I butchered that because I don't speak French, but Picasso's painting is on here. And then from there, we go to back that thing up. You a fire motherfucker. Why don't you back that thing up? This is also Bordeaux. So keep backing that thing up. You find motherfucker back that thing. This is Burgundy, which um, me and Chris, we take a trip to Burgundy in the middle of July. So middle of July, we'll be in Burgundy trying to get much more. Let's talk about two very, very, very important bottles to me, myself. The Code d'Estranel, I think I said that right. This bottle means a lot to me because Neymar is number 10. And I think they only did 10 of these bottles. So I begged and pleaded with them to give me the 10th bottle. Neymar's the GOAT, so everything we're doing here is all about number 10. And then this one is called Du Cru. And this one is special because it's from 2019, which is my daughter's birth year. So they put Riley Butler on here. They did 33 of this collection. Guess what number mine is? Any takers? 10. Neymar again. It's all about Neymar, if you haven't noticed. We're at my domino table slash card table. This is where I be kicking ass. Crazy. I started playing dominoes when I was probably like four. And it's how my dad taught me how to count. And ever since then, I've just been the best at it. Um, I'm not afraid to admit that. You know, some people like to stay humble about it. Fuck that. I'm the best in the world at dominoes. A lot goes on out here. You know, pool, cabana over there, kitchen, sand volleyball. The craziest part about the sand volleyball court is it used to be a tennis court. And then I was like, I don't even fucking like tennis. So I got a great idea. Let's just dump fucking 20 tons of sand on top of it. And then the following summer, you fall in love with tennis. That's how stupid I am. So now I got to figure out a place to put a tennis court. We work out on the sand, just a different way to get ready for the season. Running, volleyball, obviously. Beach tennis is a new thing that we've been doing. And then foot volley. So whenever the Brazilians are over here at the house, that's the game that they want to play. And I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not good, but... It's, it's a challenge. I'm going to say I've won every time. I'm not going to say I lost every time either, but it's difficult. I lost every time. I just like Southern California because you got all the space that you need. It's quiet. I like that. I just want to be around my people. I want to do what I want to do and not bother anybody. What better place to do it than Southern California? Yeehaw. This is my spot. This is the first Big Face Coffee Shop here in my own home. I will allow my neighbors to come in here, but for everybody here, coffee will cost you 60 bucks and I'm not fucking around. We don't take cash here, but I take cash under the table, so. Big Face Coffee is a venture that I really started in the bubble and it just started out with a, a love of coffee. And since then, I've been able to build this incredible team behind Big Face to help make all of this stuff come to life. After basketball, this is what I want to be doing. For me, personally, coffee is a lot like wine in the sense that you can never know everything about it. But more than anything, you get to sit down with people that you don't get to see every day. And I mean, that's always been my dream. Just chill, coffee, and, and talk to some really good people. This is a custom machine that we did with La Marzocco. We got the opportunity to go visit La Marzocco in Italy. And the first thing that I saw when I was in there was this machine. And I was just like, can I please, please, please have one? And they said, yes. And now I have it in my own home. I don't think you'll see one of these anywhere else in the United States, by the way. So think about that.
We are in the dining room. In the hood growing up, where you eat at is called the living room, but now that I'm a little bit fancy, I have a dining room. This is where all my cool friends come over and we eat dinner and we drink expensive wines and we talk about nothing important. And I get to put my foot up on this chair because I paid for it. So I do what I want to do in my house. I don't do too much in this space besides drink wine. And if my boys are here and I don't want to share my wine that I paid for in my chair, then I don't have to. So I'm in here a lot by myself, too. Tiffany did an incredible job. With these big paintings right here. I feel like they say something in this area. Tiffany picked these. Tiffany, great, great find, great pick. These are daffodils. Yeah, I'm a botanist. Right now, we are on this landing upstairs above the entry slash foyer. These chairs are cause chairs. Brian's a good friend of mine, so thank you for the chairs, Brian. They're out here because they were gonna go in my daughter's room, but then I figured when I wasn't looking, she would draw all over them. So now I can watch her draw on them out here in this beautiful hallway, because I know that's gonna happen. This is my bed. It's customed. Tiffany didn't do that one. I did that. I think it's like nine by something. It's pretty big. Very, very, very comfortable. And then I have a, it's not a strategically placed big face mug back there or anything, but it's a coffee cup back there. I wanted to be able to come here and just relax. I don't want too many colorful things. I want it to be very, very, very neutral. I think she overdid it on the, the fancy pillows on the bed. Every day I get into bed, I have to throw all of those off and then put them back on. I mean, the night ritual is my daughter comes running in here from the other room and jumps on the bed because she doesn't want to go to sleep, you know, like kids do. Then I'm in here watching my show. I could be watching anything. Batman, Superman, um, Money Talks. Ooh, Bad Boys. Love that movie. Fucking Bluey. I don't want to fucking watch Bluey at 11 o'clock. You shouldn't even be up at 11. As often as I should get great sleep in my own bed because of my kids. I do not, but I love y'all, I really do. This view is really special to me. Once again, I love Europe, I love Italy. And so whenever I look out over the balcony, it's a way to say we kind of brought Italy to us here because growing up, I didn't even know where Italy was. I was never supposed to make it to go see Italy. So now I can wake up in the morning and I get my own little piece of Italy. My bathroom, I mean, it's a bathroom. It got two toilets. It got two showers. Tiffany wanted a standalone tub. Tiffany got a standalone tub. I'm gonna take the credit for this one. I did ask for Florida stealing marble, actually. And I knew that this was marble. I definitely did. It was my idea to start on the floor and take it to the ceiling with the marble. I mean, I feel like you dirty as hell if you don't spend a lot, like you have to take showers. So, and I work out consistently. So I would say I'm in here about if, I, if the kids are taking a bath and you can't leave your kids uncivilized because they just drink the pee water, which I don't even understand why kids do that. So they're in the fucking tub for 45 minutes. That adds on to the time that I'm in here. Probably like two showers a day, maybe three, at like 15 minutes, 15 times three, 57. Yeah, 57 minutes. <laughs> Thanks for coming through. Kids must be fed and I must play dominoes. See ya.